How's it going, Radical viewers, and welcome back to another Grim Rolls, where we try to recreate well-known, unique, or infamous characters in Baldur's Gate 3. Time stamps down below in the description for your convenience, but for now, let's dive into the lore of today's subject. Caddy Bree, originally named Catalan, an auburn-haired beauty that spoke with a dwarven cadence, from a mother lost in childbirth and a father later to goblin attacks. She herself, however, was saved when a red-bearded dwarf and his kin came and repelled the goblin forces, taking the girl on as an adoptive daughter of the clan. As the years passed and she grew, she quickly befriended an oddity of Icewind Dale, a drow with a Black Panther companion who would soon come to call her and her dwarven stepfather some of his closest friends, as well as a brother of sorts and a seven-foot-tall barbarian under the dwarf's service. Soon she became a valued member of the companions as a dexterous fighter with a keen eye and a magic bow, though tragedy befell her one day that would all but cripple her. Though not to be undone by such a shortfall, the auburn-haired beauty began to study magic and the arcane in the fashion of a wizard. Though in only 13 years, she fell victim to the spell plague, which would go on to take her life. But her tale would not end there. Her spirit was reincarnated, and she found herself trained in not just the arcana of the Weave with Mistra, but also the clerical wisdoms of Maliki, the forest goddess. Thus, her tale began anew, despite the entire reason for her reincarnation being to prepare to reunite with her long-lost old friends of the Hall. To say more would even further ruin a fantastic book series I wholeheartedly recommend, as Caddy Bree's tale is just one of many told in The Legend of Dritz by R.A. Salvatore. But enough about that, let's dive into the appearance and the level guide. Starting with our appearance, we're going to go with Identity Female, voice number 2, head 5, neutral tone 3, no scarring, no maturity, Freckle quantity, we're actually going to increase all the way up. But we're not going to do anything with the freckle intensity or the vitiligal pigmentation. We're not going to do anything with body art. Eyes, we're going to have as blue 4, as it's constantly described in the books that Caddy Bree's eyes are this deep, deep, entrancing blue that's almost hard to look away from. Makeup, I'm not the one to ask in regards to makeup, so I leave that completely to player interpretation. For hair, we're going to go ahead and throw on the Willow Tears, with Brown Red 4 as our hair color and Ginger 3 as our highlights. And we're going to crank that up into the 35 range, just so it's subtle enough to where it doesn't become overbearing, and there's just enough of a hint to it to add more flair to the hair color. Graying we're going to leave as is, as there's no graying. And unfortunately for our dear Puent, for those who know who he is, no, we will not be putting facial hair on Caddy Bree. Do comment if you get the joke. As Caddy Bree, we're going to select our race as human, our starting class as fighter, with a fighting style in archery and a noble background. This helps represent Caddy Bree's young, very intriguing life among dwarves, as she was taught by Clan Battlehammer to be quite the fighter though she leaned more towards the bow than anything else. The background for Noble, well, she is the adoptive daughter of Brunner Battlehammer, who went on to become King of Mithra Hall, making her something of a dwarven princess of sorts. Our ability point distribution will be as thus. We'll have a 12 in Strength, a 14 in Dex, Constitution at 13, 11 Intelligence, 12 Wisdom, and 12 Charisma with our plus two bonus going to our dexterity and our plus one bonus going to constitution to make dexterity 16 and constitution 14 at the end of it all. For our Rachel and class bonus proficiencies, we're gonna take up acrobatics, insight, and perception. For levels two through eight, we're gonna stick with fighter and we're gonna take the champion subclass. Emulating how, while Cadbury is a very remarkable fighter, the only remarkable thing kind of about her other than the magic bow is the fact she's a remarkable fighter. Not much really else gets mentioned other than she's great with a bow and pretty decent with a sword. One in particular, which uh, might be considered somewhat cursed. And with the remaining four levels, we're going to drop those in Wizard with the Evocation subclass. 
This is our representation of her first reincarnation and her first life, where at the tail end of it she was studying to be a wizard. It just wasn't a whole lot of time of studying before tragedy would befall her. I want to thank everyone for the sudden reception the series has found. The comments and requests from the first two videos have been great and only inspire and spur me forward on project videos like these. I am truly floored and sincerely thank you all. Right now, after getting enough requests to do a poll, I've actually decided to stop my Companions of the Hall, as well as potentially redo the first two in this video's fashion and update it after some viewer critique. And then we're going to be doing the infamous assassin, Artemis and Trary as our next subject on Grimrolls, followed by Jarlaxle, Bruner, and Regis, which will complete my original idea of this series. Though, it doesn't have to end there. For that, I am always open to ideas, opinions, and requests, so feel free to not just like, share, and subscribe, but drop a comment about what you might like to see in the future of Grimrolls. Until then, though, stay radical, viewers, and we will catch you all in the next video. See you then.